Welcome back. As you can see, I'm building the sail. My cough is only receding very slowly, so I'm staying out of the workshop and suddenly on sail making. Why this sail, you might ask? It's a round mast, which is not optimal, but when it's combined with a sail, a twin skin sail like this, when it's on the wind or reaching, it's a very low drag situation and here's a chart to give the argument for that in the studies that have been done this is right up there in the way of low drag so low drag means going to windward well that means less healing um, theoretically it means you need less sail area because it's more efficient it's still quite efficient in this situation when it's reefed um, when the winds entering on this angle but of course if you have to tack and you can't unroll the sail from around the mast and you go on the other tack it's not such a pretty situation why the square top wouldn't it be easier just to have a pointy top sail and in some ways yes it would because there are Lundstrom rigs without the battens so it's basically a big triangular sail but the downside of that is you get a longer mast this area of the sail up here is not that efficient. It's not good for the writing moments to have this weight this far up. And so that's why I've gone for a square top to keep the mast length down. And the air flowing over this area is better with a square top. You get less vortice issues. And the boat will be very well balanced because it's wing and wing, a sail at either side. But not only is it rotating, it's on a tabernacle. The mast will be able to be raised and lowered from the cockpit. The main load path on the sail is down through here. So that's why those panels are pretty much lined up <clears throat> with the weave in the right direction to take the loads. The first two panels are probably the hardest panels to cut out. They have the most measuring to do. I was going to cut them out with a hot knife. A lot of fumes were coming off the hot knife and I thought that's the last thing I need is to irritate my lungs right now. I'm still coughing quite a bit. This material apparently is not too bad with an unmelted um, edge. So you can see I've pretty much put all the dimensions in that I can think of. Here before I do any sail panel cutting or sewing I'm making up some test pieces to test out the hot knife and have some strips I can run through the machine to get the setups right. Let me overlap here. The recommendation is from 12 to 15 millimeters. I'm starting with 12, but it turned out I needed 15. I check to see if the thread is pulling through evenly from either side and the knot is in the middle of the fabric. And if it wasn't, I'd have to make some tension adjustments. It's quite sobering to see how much this material weighs before I cut it all up. I have to move the sofa for the, my first measurement. Um, I'm measuring everything twice and ticking it off on the drawing as checked. Do the port and starboard panels match up? I'm relieved to say yes. First two panels, one for each side of the sail. I only have to cut two more panels and then I can start sewing something together. This is 10 millimeter double-sided basting tape and I'm laying it down for the first time trying not to stretch it. So 
So in my first scene, it's a bit rough. How did it go yesterday? Well, I couldn't help sewing into the evening. You'll see it gets worse and worse, the stitching. This is the worst area because this is where I started. And I, the walking foot on this machine is barely capable for my situation. I'm embarrassed to show the stitching, but it will be covered by the corner patch. I just realized this morning. This is my first sale I've ever made. So that's another mistake. Start on the easiest part of the sale, which in a certain way I thought I was doing, but no, I should have started at the top. What's my amateur assessment of this machine? This proper sale right machine, there's a lot of knockoffs and apparently they're not very good. I would say from my limited experience and from what I've read, it's the bare basics, you can get away with using it, but it's not ideal. The walking foot on it is not as advanced as on some machines. And I'll probably get away with using it for this job. But what's really unfair on the situation is I haven't got a proper sewing table. I was going to set up the table down in the workshop to do this. But um, I would have had to widen it. And... So running the sail over a table like this, um, I don't think it's ideal because um, it backs up and you've got to stop and start all the time. And even a professional sail maker would probably look at this and go, oh, you're really up against it there. Something else I've learned is run the knife along the waist side. So if it leaves the straight edge, it's going into material that you're not going to use. So I, I made a slight mistake learning that lesson the hard way, but it was only a matter of a millimetre or two, and it only happened once so far. I'm embarrassed to say I'm learning too much about this sewing as I go along, and some of the sewing is not pretty on the sail itself. The cutting out, the joining is going really well. I'm still learning about the machine, and... Um, there's a lot to learn. One of the things is to use a full bobbin for each length of this, this sewing this material. Otherwise, it hasn't happened to me yet, but it's one thing I did pick up over the years watching sail making movies. Use a full bobbin each time. So I'm ending up with lots of, um, a little bit more than half used bobbins, I think. Now, it's, I haven't tried it yet, but I bought some tables this morning. You can see I'm turning the house into a loft. It's going to be so much easier to sew this sail. Um, I've got a table down there on the end of this table as well. So I talked to my friend Paul who loaned me the machine and it seemed like there was no other way around it but to try and create a bit of a, a loft in the house. Let's see how it goes. So I'm starting off with a reverse. On the sail right videos I watched, you don't need to reverse on the edge because it gets covered with tape. But um, I'm just doing it as an extra precaution anyway. It's my understanding the stitching should be about 3 sixteenths by 3 sixteenths, 4 millimeters by 4 millimeters. I think I'm achieving that. When I started, I was using too big a stitch. It's confession time, but yeah, it was too big for the width of the seam I had, and I was really struggling. But today, the stitching looks like it's very even. It's not, I'm not pushing it too hard to compensate for the drag. So already the table is working, I'm very happy to say.
is a little bit hard to control. Can't grab the material very easily. I can't push it along the table because there's It looks like it's pulling the stitch through evenly from both sides, so the join is in the middle of the fabric. That's the ideal, apparently. So it's going quite well. I'm nearly having to put it out the window. <laughs> I've got just enough space here really to make this probably work okay. That's one row, now for the next one. So this is panel four I'm adding to the sale. So we're slowly getting there. I'd like to thank those who reached out. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure exactly what's wrong with me. I'm still coughing quite badly. Um, I think there's a bit of progress, but my antibiotics end today. So this is the best thing I can be doing rather than being in the workshop. And I'd like to thank um, a relative of mine who works for one of New Zealand's biggest sail makers who reached out and offered for me to have all the panels cut on their machine. And he also offered that I could go down and sew all this on one of their tables. But um, <clears throat> thank you, but I, I won't take you up on that. I'm sort of quite enjoying this process of struggling at home. Um, so hopefully we'll have some good progress by the next video in all respects. And um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Cloaked in